Last week, I got to chat with Ray Trapani, star of Netflix's new documentary called Bitcoin, and the man behind one of the largest crypto scams in history called Centratech. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be a criminal. If I could have put it in my yearbook, I would have put, I want to be a criminal. Ray was ultimately caught, but he cooperated with authorities against his co-conspirators, so he managed to walk away with no prison time. Over a few drinks, Ray and I chatted about his childhood trauma, struggling with his sexuality growing up, his first relationship, being considered a snitch, and his newfound fame and attention mostly from ladies. Also, I'm not a seasoned podcaster or interviewer, so I apologize if I'm not amazing at this, and I'm also sorry for any little technical difficulties. This is where we wonder, is he a narcissist? Is he a sociopath? <laughs> is he a psychopath? I don't know. Hopefully we can find out. Obviously, you're probably not the most easily likable guy because you are technically a massive criminal and scammer, I guess. Fair enough. Fair enough. But uh, I'm still interested in hearing your backstory and how you ended up doing some of these things. I guess we can start from the beginning. Yeah, all right. So leading into it, like as a kid, so like I grew up like decent up until like uh, my, my childhood was like pretty good at first. Like I live in like a beach town. Two older brothers, my mom's just always working. And then um, once my mom remarried, it's like where shit got fucked up, right? It's like where uh, two stepbrothers came in and they were both like slightly, do you say retarded on this? You don't care? I don't care personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but they were both like in, spe not, not special ed classes, but they were in like fucking, um, they called it TLP. I don't even know what it stands for. So they actually for. did have learning disabilities. You don't yeah. just mean it as like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always say they were half retarded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm very not, I'm not PC, so. <laughs> yeah, so that's like how I'd explain them. They were like humans, but they were half retarded. But um, yeah, then like around like eight years old, like I just started getting molested. Just like weird shit, like it was just like went from playing like online video games, like on the computer. And then he was just like, oh, watch this. It was like gay porn and shit like that. And then he like slowly like just made moves on me, which was, you know, at eight, he was probably like 12. And then that like fucked me up because I always just thought like everybody knew in my family. That's where like I was just like became super, just like hated the world essentially. So you like felt like they knew but they just weren't doing anything to help you or like... Yeah, I thought literally everybody in my family knew because it just became like so obvious because it was like always happening. Yeah. Right? So like it was like multiple years like how do you miss that? Like everywhere I'd go would just be like, you know, and then you like... As a little kid, you like don't know how to do. Like you almost start enjoying it because you're like first sexual experience is that, which yeah. is very weird, you know. And then you're like, am I gay? You know, like yeah. Did it make you question your sexuality? A hundred percent. Yeah. So I was like going into like, and then like back in like I'm 32, so like back then gays were like still hated, yeah. right? It wasn't like now like we'd be like, oh fuck it, I'm gay, you know, and everybody would be like, oh I love you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you were, like, embarrassed about it. Yeah, for sure, exactly. So, like, I was totally embarrassed, and then, like, I was like, why isn't anybody doing it? And then they started testing me, like, in class. Like, I went from, even though I was super young, I was doing good, and then, like, I just, no, everybody was, they started testing me for, like, ADHD, all that type of stuff, and I'm like, oh, they're like, you're passing the test. Like, why aren't you paying attention in class? But never once did, like, even those uh, professors, or whatever the fuck it is, like the guidance counselors, they never asked, like, is anything going on at home? Were you misbehaving in school, or what What made them, like, want to test you? For I that? just went from, like, a talkative regular kid to, like, a silent, like, not paying attention in class kid. And then, like, A's to literally, like, F's. So you were, like, a pretty good kid in school prior yeah. to that? Yeah, I was, like, a regular good kid. Like, my, my life was good up until that point, right? Because, like, we lived in like a decent town. My mom was always working, so like I was kind of being just raised by like my brothers, but that's like kind of fine, you know? That's not like a sob story. Yeah. But yeah, then like that happens, and then like by 12, he just like starts like giving me weed or and like maybe like a Xanax or whatever, and I was like, whatever, fuck it. You and know? was the molestation still going on by that point? Yeah, 12, it's still going on. So it's like four years straight of just like, and like you're like at this point at 12 you're like i'm pretty much gay right like that's what you kind of think yeah and then by like 13 but you're like also like anti-gay because you're ashamed of it right and then like 13 i got like a girlfriend mm -hmm. and then i had sex with a girl and i was like oh, i'm definitely not gay <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much where it shifted 
quick pause, but I wanted to thank the sponsor of this video, Aura. Aura is basically an all-in-one digital safety and identity theft protection service that protects you from scammers, hackers, and cybercrime by scanning the web and the dark web for your sensitive information like your emails, passwords, social security number, etc., and alerts you immediately if it finds any of your personal information leaked out there on the internet and automatically requests removal for you. Data brokers are making a fortune selling your personal information online, and personally, I was shocked to see how much of my sensitive information had been leaked out there on sketchy websites on the internet. I started using Aura over a year ago, and when I signed up, they found my passwords, my home address, and my phone number leaked out there on the internet, and they automatically removed them for me. You can see my Aura notifications right here where Aura has removed my information from sketchy websites, and Aura's actually got a whole suite of other useful features like a password manager, a VPN, antivirus software, identity theft protection, scam call protection, junk mail removal, they monitor my credit score. Basically, it's a one-stop shop for all of your digital security needs, all in one affordable subscription so you don't have to pay for like 10 different subscriptions to things. By the way, Aura was rated the number one identity theft protection service on security.com. Aura's got 4.6 stars on the Apple App Store. They've got 4.7 stars on Trustpilot. They were rated the number one identity protection service on security.org. They were ranked the number one identity theft protection service by US News in 2023. And were in the best identity theft protection services on Forbes. I literally pay for a monthly Aura subscription right out of my own pocket, and I've literally recommended Aura to my own mother. But Aura is actually offering my followers a two-week free trial at aura.com slash Tiffany or using this handy little QR code right here. So needless to say, I genuinely think Aura is worth a try, even if just to check and see if any of your personal information has been leaked out there on the internet, because I was seriously surprised to see how much of my personal information was leaked on sketchy websites and Aura removed that for me. Thank you so much to Aura and back to the video. I get my first girlfriend and she was like, like a hood girl. Like there, there was like, my, my town was very weird. It was like beach town, the hood, and then like Jews on the other side of town. And that was like the melting pot of Lawrence. And what would you say that you grew up as? Like a beach kid? Yeah. But then she was like the hood, she was white, but she was like the hood superstar. <laughs> like That's kind big of ass, like, uh, yeah, she was like super, like, well, more, like, way more developed. Mm -hmm. So, whatever, that happens. <laughs> um, from there, yeah, then you're like, I, for a while, I'm just with her. Like, I'm not, I'm like super horny always, but like, because your sexual clock is just fucked up, you know? Like, yeah. um, later down the line, it definitely shows more, like, when I'm single or whatever I was doing in Florida. I had a girlfriend at that time, too, but whatever, that's besides the point. <laughs> <laughs> Still going to strip clubs. <laughs> yeah, strip clubs are okay, I guess. <laughs> Just sure. Not bringing 20 of them back to the hotel. That's not the healthy. <laughs> that's not the healthiest thing in a relationship. Um, but yeah, I mean, from there, like 13, that goes on. I date that girl for like all of high school, basically. But I get like, we end up becoming like drug addicts together. And like, I'm selling, I'm selling weed basically like at like age... Whatever eighth grade is, I don't even know. What was your introduction to drugs? My, so like my two older brothers are selling weed. And then my stepbrother had introduced me to like the first time I smoked weed, maybe like a Xanax. Um, so like my brothers kind of all just introduced me to like that. And then my, I ended up like one day, like I'm in class and like first time, I think I guess middle school, whatever it was, like middle school, whatever. Then me and this kid just start like getting along. It's like some stupid joke off like while we're reading a book. And then we just, you know, like those like belly laughs in the middle of class where you can't stop laughing when mm -hmm. the other person's laughing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that happened. It was, we were reading fucking Old Yeller. You ever read that book? I don't think I have. <laughs> I know that's an American classic. <laughs> but, but there's like a part where the guy's like also retarded. And then <laughs> he says like, uh, I forget what he says, like. But the person read it in like that voice, you know, and it just, <laughs> just, just fucking fucked us all up. If anyone wants to cancel me or Ray, feel free to. What, I'm too, too many R, R no, words? No, I think it's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what word, because I'm not like actually talking about whatever, you know, like, I'm not like, it's not like a disability. Oh, like no, a, I never mean harm guy. by it. Yeah, I mean no harm. <laughs> and like the stepbrother, he can go fuck himself anyways. That happens, then I start hanging out with him, and then like you, I went to his house, and then he just had, um, like his older brother was like the weed kingpin of New York. Mm -hmm. So like there's hundreds of pounds of weed and millions of dollars in cash. Yeah. And this is like, you're like 
14. Yeah. You know, so you're like, oh, this is like my first introduction to seeing like, totally. like illegal business works. And then you also have like my grandfather who like never had seen him do anything, but he was like, any problem that would happen, he would like curse the guy, you don't know who I am, like type of thing, you know, like, all right, this guy's like connected. All the New York unions are kind of connected guys. Um, so like, all right, and then he always has just like a lot of cash. And like if any, uh, my first car, he buys it cash, you know, like mm -hmm. anything that goes wrong, it's just like. Fixes it with money. Yeah. Yeah. Like you get an accident, or here's a couple of bucks, pay, pay the guy off, whatever type of thing. So like that aspect of it, I just was just like, there was like no path besides crime really, right? Like, yeah. cause like I wasn't going to be like my mom who was like 60 hours a week coming home, like dying. I mean, I started doing drugs pretty young in high school. The drug dealer I was hanging out with, I was 14, he was like 24 or whatever. But um, kind of it, it was fucked up and we were romantically involved. And I think that was also ah, fucked up. That's, it was fucked up. That's even worse. It was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> the drug part is like, I guess, but maybe the- Yeah, I mean, he ended up killing himself. Yeah. So, I don't, I, yeah, so that's another fucked up thing. But I do remember watching my family members really working their asses off and making like moderate incomes. And then you go to a drug dealer's house who's making insane cash. Yeah. And you're kind of like, if you could choose between either one, I can absolutely understand why you would be like, this guy looks like he's enjoying his life, having a good time and making probably more money than some of these people who are making, who are working their asses off. So, I mean, when I was in high school, I think I, t I told you I started selling ecstasy. I don't think I got to the peaks where you were selling like insane amounts. I was just selling to like other people in my high school. Yeah, that's like how it starts, obviously, right? Like even me like uh so like that was like my best friend you see all that money the weed whatever and you're like all right i guess i should start selling weed my brothers are like already selling weed and i'm like all right fuck it like um and then he like he had so much weed that he was just like here just like try to sell weed free you know yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. there was no risk totally <laughs> i was like all right cool and then like we end up like the first couple of times you just smoke it all yeah. and because you don't even have customers <laughs> <laughs> like it wasn't like i was just like instantly like this great drug dealer right but then like Time passes and then like I, like over once you like stop selling, you're like whatever. Then you're like just smoking. But then you like one summer, I remember like going, my year going into high school, I made like 15 grand over a summer. And then like I had it like all in cash. Yeah. So like ninth grade year, I just had like 10, 15 grand in cash, literally like, and like. That's, that's like, an insane amount of money for Yeah. Me. And like all in twenties. You're you like showing off to like the teachers. It just like became just like a, another like, ego it's pretty much what you see in like rap videos right yeah. like the same shit like why they show off their money is just like just to show off i mean it sounds like you dealt with like a few years of sort of feeling i don't know if insecure is the right word but i mean you were questioning like sexuality because of the abuse that was happening to you and then like now you're kind of like well now i can like kind of show off yeah even my first fight in high school i fought a gay kid because like i was like you know, like, fuck the fuck. That you're, like, yeah, no, I'm not gay. Yeah. yeah. Is that where it stemmed from? Like, because you were trying to. Hundred percent. The kid did nothing wrong. You know. Oh, that's that's sad. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, he might have said something, but like, I was like, like I usually wouldn't. I'm not a fighter at all. Like, I'm. Yeah. Like, just not a violent person. Um, but yeah, like that shit was. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> and was the sexual abuse still going on when you had a girlfriend? No. So like, they got a divorce. Okay. Right at that point. So like I got a girlfriend, they got a divorce, but I still always thought my family knew and just never did anything about it. Yeah. Did you ever once bring it up to your family? Or? I, I did after I got like sober this time. So like I never did. And then it was so like no one ever knew until like a couple years ago. Damn, that's like recent. Yeah. And then like it took like me, like when I got my uh, like drug and alcohol certification, I was just like talking always and talking to other people. That's why I got, I was like, ah, oh, these people are like so fucked up. Still, like, they're like 50 and they're like still talking about the person they hate and like how they like hate life. And I'm like, I can't like do that because I don't even hate life anyways, you know? Yeah. So I was like, let me just bring it up and like kind of just put it to bed. And like everybody says they don't know, they didn't know. So like, I'm just like, all right, I guess they didn't know. Holy shit. But you just kept that like pent up and harbored for that many years. I mean, it definitely gets like compartmentalized, but I definitely knew as a little kid, I was like, I'm going to fuck the world up for sure. You know? Yeah. Like you just like, there was just like building resentment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I just had no trust for anybody. So yeah. I was like, if I can't trust anybody, like I'm not going to make it so people can trust me. 
No, that makes sense. Oh, I have to always put in disclaimers. Like, obviously, I'm not saying it makes sense as in being like, <laughs> let's justify the fact that you committed crimes. But no. I mean, psychologically, it's understandable how that can enter your mind and like become your viewpoint on the world. Yeah, that, that's like my whole thing is like, I was just talking to somebody and I'm like, they're like, well, what did I say? I forget what I said. Like, well, my friend was telling oh, me that I'm like- saying that you're playing the victim card. Yeah, I'm playing the victim card. And I don't know like how to take it since he said that to me. No, I mean, that would, I don't like that he said that to you. Is it the, the friend that looks like SBF? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he seems like a good friend. You guys seem like long, like long Yeah, like friends. there's no, nothing either of us could ever say that would break the friendship. Yeah. It's just like, we always have difference in, difference in opinion on like everything. I mean, to me, I watched the documentary and they did completely cut that part of your story out so people have a perception of you where you just randomly wanted to become a criminal because that's kind of where the documentary starts off. They start with you being like, I've always wanted to be a criminal. If I could have put it in my yearbook, I would have put, I want to be a criminal. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be a criminal. If I could have put it in my yearbook, I would have put, I want to be a criminal. Obviously doesn't make you look great, but if you cut out all the backstory, I can absolutely understand why you'd want that to get out into the world, like yeah. to explain yourself a little bit. That's what I just, I just actually got off the phone with him and like the people from like the iHeartRadio podcast I'm doing. And I was just saying that, like, I was like, I saw the documentary and like, at first I was like, oh, this is like a great documentary because like, it is a good documentary. But then I'm like, I started reading all the comments and I'm like, shit, man, I got to explain myself no, here a little bit. No, totally. I think I would do the same thing. And I, I felt that way about like press that has come out about me and felt like there were aspects that were left out. And I'm like, I think it's important for people to know, like, obviously I talk about crypto crime and I'm like, I think people should know that I've personally lost money to a crypto crime. I think that's important to like my viewpoint on the world. Yeah, 100%. So. So I no, I think it's totally understandable. So I don't personally think that's the case, like playing the victim card. I think that you should get that side of the story out. And who do you think like looked the worst in the documentary out of the three of us? I mean, it obviously focused the most on you and we didn't get to hear, what's his name, Sorby? Mm -hmm. Sam Sorby or whatever. That, his Save. name was Sorby and then he changed it legally, Jordan Center to Sam to sound more like American. I love Sam's. Um, no, I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like we didn't get sound bites of him saying things like, I've always wanted to be a criminal, you know what I mean? But I think that objectively, being the one who's making the public statements, I think is one of the worst roles you can take. Well, from. there's another part to that though, is like, I never even made money off the money that was invested. I only made money off founders tokens. Yeah, and you I mean, you like obviously don't come off great. Yeah, I look terrible. You do look terrible and you look like you don't feel any remorse for the victims, which we can get into. The Farkas guy seemed like he just... I said to the FBI that shouldn't he, he shouldn't even go to jail. Yeah, I think so. But there's like a weird thing, right? Like, should he have like, cause like he, he's like knowingly seeing what we're doing illegal, right? But he's not, well, he's like promoting it. Yeah. And that's kind of what the FBI told me. And I'm like, I don't think he should. And they're like, you can't just be dumb and not fucking just be like, ah, I don't fucking know what's going on. <laughs> we're like, maybe he is that. You're like, I'm selling crack. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where did we leave off in terms of your story? You got a girlfriend, you were selling drugs. This weed, this weed dealer was just giving you fucking tons of, <laughs> tons of, tons of weed to sell. That you were doing most of it yourself, but. Like basically some kid, some like drug user was like, yo, I stole this pad from the doctor. And I was like, all right, fuck it. Like, I'll give you a couple of pills for it, right? And then I found this like Orthodox Jewish kid because my town was like bordered on this Orthodox Jewish town. And I was friends with a lot of them through like playing poker with them. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I don't know how, but a professional like handwriter. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, I guess. And then I was just like, so like I'll get a prescription from this doctor for like Tylenol and then you just copy his handwriting and we'll write out exact, because I can show you what a Roxy script looks like, like mm -hmm. off like the other, the other scripts I've gotten. Um, and then you just write it out. And then like we wrote it out and he, like I went to the one, I don't even think I, I probably didn't do the first one, but I probably made someone like go try it and it worked. Infinite money glitch. Yeah, exactly. So it was just like a pad of each page basically is like $2,400. If you really break it down, it's like 120 pills, $20 a pill. So that's like, I don't know how many pages they have in that. But then like that same guy that like got the first pad, I was like, just go get more of them. Yeah, did really well for like, but like short lived. Yeah. Cause then we ended up getting arrested. And then that kid that's in the documentary said I snitched on him. I, don't, I never snitched on that kid. Yeah. Cause that's, that seemed like sort of foreshadowing to uh yeah. That's what I was, I was trying, I got mad at Netflix, probably like more so about that than making me look bad. Cause I was like, it's all right. Like I, I'm like, I did bad shit. It's fine. It's making me look bad. But like that part was just like, 
at least people like get like emotionally attached for a little bit like at least the people that like enjoy crime stories because like once you put that in there so early like the people that are like want to be gangster guys they're like oh fuck this guy right away yeah that's true they're like this guy's a fucking brat. from like a production angle i felt like it would have been better to just not have that kid in there but was it completely not true that you snitched on him completely not true then why did he even like i've snit like i cooperated against the F with the fbi and i've cooperated in my past like with something totally different i've never cooperated against a friend then how does he even find him if he actually went to got caught selling or whatever so we both got the same charge like i got charged with like two counts of prescription fraud or whatever he got charged with one um i was never charged with like dish the whole like operation of like stealing the pads and all this type of stuff so like it wasn't like that crazy of a charge especially when you're like under 18 yeah it was like i had i just got like a ten thousand dollar lawyer and it instantly pretty much like you get drug court two years of drug court and then as long as you pass drug tests for two years you get off so there was no need that like even in that case like some cases they don't ask you to cooperate you know, like there's cases where they do, but then there was, they didn't, I don't know. It wasn't like always that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would have, but I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but you <laughs> just, so he just yeah, completely just pulled that out of his ass. So he was in it because they asked Sorby to be in it. And then Sorby was like, interview this kid. So he's like, just like either Sorby's paying him or he has like, he's giving him like selling him a dream. Like when I get out, you know, we'll be best friends type of thing. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that was like the first, yeah. one of the first moments where people are like, ah, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that part, like, there's the few, the few, like, I felt like I told so many fucked up and like crazy stories that they totally could have just like cut it in a way that like was just all truthful. Yeah. And it still looked really bad. Like mm -hmm. I still would have looked like a complete scumbag. Yeah. Right. So like, why even like do those like weird edits and like even like the house shit that like. At the end? Yeah. You buy a house? Yeah, I didn't say that. So, like, basically, I'm talking about, like, financial times in America and, like, how it's so hard for, like, my generation or younger generations to buy a house. Yeah. Right? Pretty standard take. Yeah. Um, and then, I like, talking through that, I'm, like, you know, then I'm, like, asking, because there's a lot of this, like, where you, like, we had, like, scripted lines type of thing, right? And I'm, like, oh, what would you want me to say? Yeah. Um, and then he, I was, like, and he's, like, we're talking, and I'm like, oh, what do you want me to say that I bought the house doing something shady? And then he just cut out the part where I said, what do you want me to say? Right? So it's literally me talking about Financial Times, and it's like, well, I bought the house doing something shady. <laughs> <laughs> I just would never, even, like, I'm on probation, I would never say that. Yeah, yeah, you know? true. Maybe true. off probation, I'd, be like, try to make that, like, lie and, like, be funny about it, but it's just not true. And then, so, like, I just, and I just would never say it. This is, like, such a douchey line. <laughs> <laughs> it is a douchey line. Yeah. It didn't come off great. <laughs> yeah. But then I guess people are wondering how you bought the house still. So, like, my grandfather died. I got money from that. Mm -hmm. And then that, between that, and I have a mortgage. Yeah. It's literally that. Yeah. I put 100000 into the house with the money that I got from my grandfather dying. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. No, it's pretty simple. Yeah. And then my, like, my in-laws split that with me. So, like... We both put money down and got the house. Yeah. And then, like, on the money that I got from my grandfather, I had to pay, I, like, every dollar I make, I pay 10%, right? So I paid 10000 to the government or whatever it was towards the government um, out of the money that I got from the, my grandfather. So it wasn't, like, any sort of crazy story. Yeah. No? Yeah, they did put in some little things. That but, like, if I broke it down and then, like, that's the thing. And then, like, then they have at the end, like, where it's, like, I have a loan company that, like, it just isn't true. So, like, if you just change those things, I don't know if the documentary does this good. Maybe that's the thing, right? Like, it's, like, where it becomes weird. Like, if they just would have been, like, well, now he's, like, doing, trying to do good. <laughs> right, yeah. Would it like, have sucked? He's off drugs. Yeah. Yeah, I guess then it would make it seem like they, the, the, the purpose was for it to be, like, redemptive. Yeah, I and I don't think they want to do that. Yeah. yeah. But, like, when you see uh, Wolf of Wall Street, um... I feel like he got less shit than I get. True. Although I don't even really remember. I should rewatch Wolf of Wall Street. I think I watched that in like whenever it came out. But, but he yeah. just gets like, everybody's like, oh, this guy's a legend. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I feel like there are some like ex-criminals that do get really glorified. What were we? Okay. Yeah, I, keep, I always jump. I always That's that. okay. I don't mind. That one clip of you like in the documentary where you're like sitting and you smoke <laughs> and then you say that like line about like hitting him up on house rest. I'm sure, like, he's, like, a lonely guy. I'm, like, I'm sure you don't mind, like, a girl, like, being, like, hey, can I come over? <laughs> like, and he's just, like, a lonely dude at his parents' house. <laughs> oh, Sam. 
that it's a cool clip. Well, that I thought was not being filmed. Like the way that I'm, I'm turned away because I'm talking to someone that was on set. So I didn't actually think that was going to go into it. They asked me like really straightforward questions. I think they were trying to allude to the potential romantic relationship. Mm. And, and I was like, well, I'm not, I'm sure he doesn't mind a girl hitting up and being like, can I come over? Because like, he's yeah. a fucking lonely dude on house arrest. Yeah, that clip is good though. It, it like, it's a good clip. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that that's when it's like actual genuine talk it's so much better i think so too i remember like doing the documentary and i was recording for like 10 hours at a time were you doing that long no mine were much shorter because it wasn't like about me yeah because that's when it gets like where you just you're like almost brain dead halfway through do you really just forget the, i definitely said the most the worst things ever like the second half what do you think are the worst things you said in the doc i don't know the worst things I said in the doc. I mean, the, probably the 100000 Ethereum thing. What was that? The, or the $100,000 uh, $100, that like some random guy sent me. Oh. And then he sent me his private keys. That was the most scummy thing I think I had in the doc. I do think that that did look bad, and we've been talking about it, but yeah. it did look bad. Yeah, which is, our, like, I even said it in my live the other day. What'd you say? Just like how many people, like a genuine question. Oh, yeah. Like, if you randomly just got a hundred thousand ethereum or someone sent you their private keys with a hundred thousand ethereum and or just imagine just getting a hundred thousand ethereum right yeah and the person's like never really says anything and then it's a little different i guess because you kind of did say something but if if you knew no one was going to find out like what would you do yeah so basically the moral question of if you if someone sent you their private keys, they had a hundred thousand. Was it a hundred thousand ETH or a hundred thousand like in US dollars? US dollars. Okay. Maybe less. Okay. Like fifty. Would you take it? I mean, were you not concerned that they would obviously just know that it was you that took the money? Because he so, just sent you his private keys. So I banned him from the chat. <laughs> <laughs> so you blocked him and then took his money. Yeah. That's like, not great. No, I mean, I, I was, this is like, yeah, like also like I hadn't made money back yet, right? Like I hadn't made money in the company yet. And I was really just like, I'm on drugs. I just like, I feel like I always justify it's not good, but I don't mean to, but it, this like the actual situation is like, I'm on drugs. I still owe mad money to my family. And in that situation, I a hundred percent put that debt before this random guy that I never met. That's like, has like a fish as his avatar. And I'm like, I got to take this money and take this back. <laughs> So you owed like five, what, 500K to your family? Yeah. yeah, you had taken out loans for Miami Exotics and you owed your family like a bunch of money. Yeah. So then you have access to like 100K. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that I would do it. I don't know. I, I feel really, really bad really fucking easily. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's even like my, my whole fucking channel. Like, I have not even taken a crypto sponsorship. But most people who do have crypto YouTubes do take crypto sponsorship. So I don't know. I think that I, I like try to keep myself very, very, very clean. You would take like an exchange sponsorship. No? I've been offered. I mean, like Binance has offered and uh, OKX. I've gotten a lot of exchange offers. I've said no to everything. Really? Just because I'm like FTX was a really trusted exchange. I feel like before FTX collapsed, I probably would have taken an FTX sponsorship maybe. Yeah. And then I see FTX collapse and I'm like, I don't want that on my fucking conscience to know that I promoted something that like might fuck anyone over. So um, yeah, no, then it was just like no, no. Crypto I wish case. I can get to that point, like where you are, uh, like mentally. Where you just wouldn't do it? Yeah. Where like I would justify like, oh, it's just an exchange. It's not like an actual like scammy project. But like even Binance, we paid them to get on their exchange. Right. They didn't know due diligence. We just paid them 100 grand. That's quite fucked up Binance. All the exchanges. That's how we got on. was just paying them. Coinbase didn't do it. Inter good for Coinbase. Mm. You know what? I would take a Coinbase sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just, I just think that it's just not worth a cash grab to me. I mean, I guess I'm just more in it for like the long game and I can see influencers who promoted FTX and have been YouTubers for, for so many years longer than I have like been. Like Logan Paul vibes. <laughs> or like, like Graham Stephan. I don't know if you watch these like finance YouTubers, but like I Graham Stephan. I know the name, I don't know. Who yeah, like the, the, they're really big established YouTubers. They promoted FTX and then obviously they got a lot of shit and they have a much more built up established reputation than I do. And if, if all their reputation they've built for years can be crushed by like one bad promotion, I'm kind of like, well, I'm not even going to fucking touch it. So it, I don't know if it's because I'm like, oh my God, I'm such an amazing person. It's just kind to of To be like, able to have like your logic, I think is, shows a lot, honestly. I hope so. Like to me, I guess it's, it's logic more than me being, trying to be like, I'm an angel. I mean, like I've done illegal shit. I've sold drugs when I was yeah. in high school. And it's also just like reputational damage. 
I don't want to be known as a fucking scammer. I I would way rather have less money in the bank and have a good reputation than um, be fucking loaded and people think that I'm a fucking scam. Yeah. Which I guess, I don't know if the same is true for you since you did a documentary, which basically you call yourself a scammer and <laughs> say you're a criminal. Well, I, I was just trying to tell the story at this I point. You know, I already had fucking <laughs> done it. But it is true. Like even um, like Jordan Belfort, He's this, like a scammer guy, right? Like known right. as that. And then like his partner, uh, that who's like um, Jonah Hill, mm-hmm. has a business down in Miami, and no one even knows. Really? Like, no one knows like that. That's like his past. Interesting. So like I totally could have just like went on, got a probation, opened a business, and like not you really could. any would have anybody would have even said anything. True. Then why did you pick this path of being very public with your story, where obviously now your face is? attached to you being a fucking scammer because you are just like no one would have known that you were associated with Centra. yeah um i don't know i'm probably pretty bored the exposure yeah the exposure is great like that that aspect of it and like trying to do something something in like the media space but it was it was more so out of boredom really like because like i was on house arrest for a while i started writing and then like through trying to just sell my book this came about so you said it was like out of boredom. So I mean, I feel like you're a kind, the kind of guy who does sort of like chase thrills. Yeah. Drugs, strippers, I don't know. I was going to say hookers. I don't know what you did. Yeah, strippers, hookers, <laughs> all of it. Fast cars, you know. So I'm kind of like, was it just you needed like a rush? Yeah, like even sometimes I like, like bipolar thoughts is like, I'm like, ah, fuck it. Like just let them say it's bad, you know, like and let me just dig myself out of it. Like just for like the shits and giggles which is like the worst approach to life sometimes. I mean, I kind of understand it. My like biggest fear is having a really mundane, boring life. So, I mean, I can understand why you kind of like want to feel like, feel something. Yeah, like it was cool. Like doing Netflix was felt like so cool. It is fucking cool. Someone comes, does your makeup, like fucking all the cameras and shit. That is kind of cool, honestly. It is fucking cool. Yeah, and then like no matter how bad it is, like whatever, you know, it's like, and people think like everybody's just gonna be like, oh, like every single person I see that has seen it, they like try to take a picture or something. They like try of to. Of you, like, like with and they're you. They're like, yeah, they're like this is that was a great documentary. No, it was a really good documentary. I did think it was like it. It went max on the entertainment value. Yeah. It was really like fun to watch. It probably didn't like capture all the nuances of your story and everything. Which like you that. can't, right? Like I recorded a hundred hours. Totally. So like, there's no way they could have got all the nuances. I just didn't. I just didn't like like the, the parts that actually weren't true. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Pot calling the kettle black type of thing. You know, that's pretty much what it is. Do you want fame? Um, honestly, I don't know. Like once I'm more probation, I would like to just open a business. Yeah. Or do something like out. I don't know. But like, obviously, if you can do this like for a living, it'd be fantastic. It's honestly ideal. Like I personally have never wanted to like work a full time job or work nine to five or have a boss. I feel like fame in itself. I'm come. I, I don't know if that's. Yeah, I don't want to be like fucking you know the rock or some shit like where like everybody knows you are you getting recognized now when you go out no like always you know like at the gym that's like the worst is at the gym i mean i i, I don't go to the gym but like i've been <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've been recognized at like grocery stores i got recognized at fucking trader joe's today today yeah Someone's just like, the fucking oh is that store. tiffany hung someone literally just yelled tiff i looked up and he was like i follow you on twitter or whatever but i don't know if i enjoy it like, I kind of like anonymity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like fame in theory sounds like, oh, that could be cool. But, and not that I've reached that. But getting recognized, I find kind of like invasive. And I don't know. Like, do you, do you like it when you get recognized? So like pretty much every conversation I've had that's been by someone that's recognized me is like, they try to talk about like, like at the gym, like yesterday, guys talking about just like how his daughter has addiction problems and just wants to talk. But he ends up talking for like an hour. And that's where I'm like, all right, I'm like literally on the machine. <laughs> I got to be home. You know, like, I, yeah. there's no way I can, like, as soon as he does that, I'm like, all right, guess I'm not working out today. <laughs> like, I took like a pre-workout, like it's like kicked in already. <laughs> I'm fucking. You're like, oh, I guess that's fucked. <laughs> yeah. It is sweet in theory. And like, he's just telling me all about his daughter's problems. And I'm like, this is, I feel very bad. You know, like, uh, this is, you know, like his daughter had like, eating disorder and then like and like i like i try to give him like genuine advice 
but you're also but i'm pretty much just like stay like what my mom did worked right like just fucking never leave her side stay supportive no matter what and that's pretty much all you can do right like like and then just like if she fucks up send her back to rehab be there for her when she gets out yeah you know like send her to a professional and that's like all you can do yeah Totally. Right. And you're like, I need to get back to my workout. Yeah. Like, and then, like, the worst is like when he starts talking about like uh, his job or something like that. You're like, all right, we, we already got like what we want to talk about. <laughs> like, I don't need to know anymore. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're gonna get recognized more and more now, so. Yeah. Which it's is fine. If I can make money off of it, it's fine. That's really when it becomes fine. Well, if you want to start a new business, now that your face is out there, how can people trust you? I mean. I don't know if I would like put my money. <laughs> so like when people think about that aspect of it, like I'm not asking people to invest. Yeah. You're trying to trying to buy a product. Yeah. So like people that has like no bearing on that aspect of business. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's totally different. It's not like I'm trying to take a company public. Yeah. You know, so that aspect of it is, and like I have like a million people that are trying to give me money to invest in a company, like my company that are either just really know me or they just like, I don't know. I mean, they probably there's probably a lot of them that just aren't the best investors. <laughs> but it's like, oh, you you deserve a second chance. Like you're a good face for a business. You are a good face for a business. So like that aspect of it, I don't I don't know what to say, you know. But like I'm not. I would probably just never take like investment money for a business. I would, and then so like you really honestly you don't lose like the same people that wouldn't invest in me before won't invest in me now. I don't yeah. think really like anything changed in that regard. Like you can't be trusted. Uh, the people that can't trust me, they didn't, wouldn't have trust me anyway. Yeah. If they yeah. would have met me, they would have seen like they've been like, ah, oh, you don't really have that much experience. Like who the fuck? I'm not asking Mark Cuban to lend me money. <laughs> I guess you're right though. I mean, at business, it's just like if you create a valuable enough product and people want to buy it, then it's like it doesn't really matter if people think you're. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I would open like a men's health brand, which is like fucking selling skin products and shit and they just be like oh he has good skin let me buy the product that's true would you do that yeah that's what i want that's what i'm Men, that's like, like skincare? my skincare like yeah like all type of things like that like um nootropics things that like help your brain work that's cool yeah oh that's the that's like my next business is i'll that. try it out yeah. I've never tried nootropics you, or anything. You, you don't think i'm just trying to you could scam to skin me it. you're like it's just fucking <laughs> water <laughs> <laughs> speak highly of me i'm like we're done i'm like i would try whatever you put on. <laughs> no but like it'd be things that like actual or provable like Real clearly products. like my brain's working decent enough and then like my skin's decent enough so like those things like if it was a, a skin thing like oh he has good skin i'm 32 i look better than i did in my 20s like so like there's just things that you can't really miss on are you on steroids are you on ozempic no nah, definitely not ozempic i was never fat <laughs> Steroids? Maybe a little testosterone. <laughs> that's like, <laughs> I, I, I would definitely try, to, that's like a whole market, the testosterone market, which is like where every, that's like what Joe Rogan's always promoting. Really? I don't know anything about it, honestly. Like I said, I don't even go to the fucking gyms. <laughs> well, like in, in America, like men's testosterone, that's like why like men have become like more and more feminine over the years mm-hmm. is like because of like processed foods and BPAs, all this type of stuff. So like, Nowadays, like people that are 30, they have like the, a terrible testosterone score. It's like literally from like 300 to 1,000 is like average scores. Everybody like in, once they hit 30, they're like under 300. So like they're basically tired all the time, um, no energy, all like the things everybody's like, I got brain fog. They're like our age and they're like, I got brain fog. And like, mm-hmm. you just take, and then like you just take a little testosterone and like not like, I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder, you know, but like if you just take a little testosterone, you're basically right back into like you sleep great, all the energy, no brain fog, but then like it's bad for like uh, if you're trying to have kids. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you're basically your balls stop working. Really? Yeah. So does it fuck up like erections and stuff? No, your your erections are completely great, but your balls definitely get smaller. (laughs) Really interesting. Yeah. You do know a lot about this stuff. I this is literally all I like the whole time besides like filming and stuff. This is all I study. This is like skin stuff, anti aging stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, if you did tweet. You're like people say a lot of bad shit about me, but no one's called me ugly. <laughs> I actually saw one person. 
She's like, um, she's like a fat lesbian, but <laughs> <laughs> but she called me mediocre. <laughs> she called you mediocre. And I was, I almost, I, I like wanted to write and be like, eh, at least she didn't call me ugly, you know? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, you do look good. If I was a guy, I'd probably be like, yeah, I want to get on whatever the fuck this guy's, whatever you're doing, your routine. Well, that's like how you can monetize like women following is by saying like, listen, like this guy's like women like him. So the men should listen. Are you getting more men or women now following you? Probably 90% 90 women. And they're all like, they're all lawyers or psychologists, which is a weird thing where it's like, it almost feels like a fetish. Do you think it's like a client fetish? Like they want yeah. to? Yeah. That's weird. Like imagine like that scenario is like, it's like a client that they think attra that's attractive. It's like a porno. Cause they're like, this guy's a fucking head case. Yeah. He, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. It's kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now you're getting fetishized. Do you like it? Um, not really. I mean like, it's okay. You know, it, like boost your ego, but. I don't know. It gets to be like a point where it's like, you feel like obligated to answer, like to try to keep like the, like the people like happy. Where like, you're like, oh, maybe I can make money off them following me. And then like, I don't want to answer all these people, you know? I don't answer most of my DMs. So you keep the mystique. No, not just the DMs, but just like, I don't know, like even like liking comments, shit like that. Like I, I'm so new into it that I feel like obligated, like, all right, I got like a small following. Let me try to like make sure they're not upset. <laughs> if you're a lady and you you like Ray Trapani's vibes, then uh, <laughs> follow him, watch his live. Send him, some, uh, send him some little super likes or whatever the fuck you end up doing. Yeah, that's why fucking Instagram's terrible for that shit. Yeah, Instagram, I guess, is, like, not really monetizable. No, but you can do the subscription thing. Have you um, tried that? I think I turned it on, but I don't have anything in behind my subscription I, That's what I have, exactly. I think I've gotten a couple notifications that people have subscribed to me. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I don't have anything behind yeah. here. I even tried to create, like, a Patreon, but I just never did anything. I'm like, I feel bad. I, can't, I actually I gotta did that for a this. sec, too. I was like, I got to delete this because, like, these people are asking me for, like, advice and shit i'm like i'm not ready to give you guys it's advice. tough to like keep up with all the different like fucking subscription platforms and like money making things i mean you were doing like daily lives for a while and like yeah it's yeah it's a lot i would do like the subscription where it's just like a daily shirtless picture or something you know <laughs> you could do that yeah there will be a lot of gay men yeah. in there a lot of gay men yeah <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the gay men. <laughs> Shout out to the gay men. <laughs> yeah. yeah, now have you come full circle? Because we were talking about this earlier. You're like, I'm not someone who like hates gay men. You struggled with that, I guess, in the past. How did this all evolve to where you've like become so comfortable? Honestly, that's where Johnny helped me so much. Like w through writing the book, he's so liberal that like I would debate topics and like I'm like I feel like my brain has like good neuroplasticity where like I hear something and I'm like I'll debate it at first like from the other side. But then I'll go home and like I'll come back with totally changed thought on it. That's good. So my like I think through that like I just was like, you know like what like and then like I end up debating, fucking like people that are like so anti-gay now. I'm like you sound ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, like the the big debate is like should it be on TV men kissing? And I'm like, well maybe those gay guys like feel a little better because they see you know, like who the fuck cares I, uh, yeah i've never even thought about that being like something we shouldn't have on tv i'm like yeah who fucking cares? well it's like never on tv but now it's like always on tv mm -hmm. i do feel like going too far in the woke direction and being like we need everyone to be like colored and and, yeah <laughs> i'm kind of like that's a little bit yeah much. absolutely i agree yeah that's I like guess my it's take. harder for you to say since you're a white man like i feel like i can uh, say these oh, things can... publicly yeah, that's like, yeah, like with Disney and stuff like that. Those right. are like the debates, especially like for kids and shit, right? Mm -hmm. But like, and you do see like basically like a gay couple on every show that you watch these days. True. Right? True. But, but like, I'm like, you know, we feel comfortable watching straight people because we're straight. But like, they, now they're like, oh, like people are accepting me because there's more gays on the TV or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think it does help people feel less like alone or scared or but this is like a debate i have with my grandma it's not like i have this debate all the time <laughs> and they're like you know they've never seen it their whole life yeah, yeah. right so it's but i'm like you know you, you sound kind of homophobic 
This is true. I mean, old people. I'm kind of like, yeah, you're old. Like, I, yeah. I they'll be homophobic. They'll be a little racist. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, it's like late night Thanksgiving night drunk conversation, like <laughs> debates. You know, once it becomes like so oh. accepted, I feel like you don't struggle with it anymore, which is a good thing. That's true. That's true. So, do you think that's what it was? Like, were you like for a while you were like beating up a kid because he was gay, kind of? Well, like I, I feel like during my scam years, I was more conservative, and now I'm like not as conservative i just don't care about politics and then, like i lean left on a lot of topics interesting i feel like i yeah i'm not really political at all really but we talked about yeah. this yeah i'm not political like i've never voted or anything but Maybe. like as far as like what i would argue in a conversation i feel like most of my stances lean left really but i don't know if that's just because i like to like debate and i'm with more conservative people I almost feel like, I just feel like most people around me lean so far left that I feel more right than them. But I don't know if I'd ever consider myself right. I'm just kind of like, we're going a little bit far with the wokeness. We're going a little bit far yeah, with like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's pretty much what I try to say about everything. It's just like, let's keep it somewhere in the middle. Yeah, totally. I think that's the smart thing to do. It's sort of like religion. We've talked about religion and I'm, I'd say I'm probably agnostic. That's, to... that's what I said to you. Well, you try to copy me now, but... I'm trying to copy you. <laughs> I just don't really, I don't believe in in god or anything like that i wonder if there are going to be people who watch this and think that like the problem with like the, the reason why you scam people is that because you're godless because i feel like that is an argument that some people have that you can't have morality without religion yeah. i'm kind of like i personally think i'm quite a moral person mostly because i like i would feel a lot of pain if i were to hurt someone do you think you feel that do you feel pain if you hurt someone or are you quite today i would you would yeah and you didn't in the past do you think that you just naturally are someone who sort of lacks empathy or do you think it was the drugs that... I think anybody, if anybody in the world took 25 Xanax, they would have, they wouldn't feel either. Yeah. Like, you'd probably be dead. Yeah, you know? I would definitely fucking be yeah. dead. So, like, I, I think once you add in that many drugs, you pretty much have no empathy. But then, yeah. like, developing it after your brain's fucking fried and, like, talking back on the stories, and it's like, all right. And then, like, you try to justify your actions always just like naturally in a way right like yeah. but like i don't mean to do that it's just i was on a lot of fucking drugs and then like this happening was like the only reason i got sober like i would have been ended up dead 100 percent like if i didn't create this cryptocurrency and fucking get in a crazy amount of trouble and have the fbi in my life like i would have probably just been shooting heroin and been dead yeah so there's like a weird part of me that's like this saved my life like how can i be like like, how can my honest opinion be like, I regret it, if it saved my life? So Ray and I chatted for quite some time and got progressively drunker as this video went on. So I've actually cut it into two separate videos. So I'll post the other one shortly. In the second half of this video, I straight up ask Ray if he's a narcissist, a sociopath, or a psychopath. And we go over some traits that are listed on Google. We also talk about depression, suicidal thoughts, etc. So if you're interested in watching that, I will post it shortly on my YouTube channel. But I may also post the entire thing as a podcast on Apple and Spotify. So if you're interested in checking it out there, then feel free to go to those. And if you'd like to leave me a nice little review, then feel free to because I'm very new on those platforms, so I have like practically no reviews. For more, you can also find Ray on Instagram at Ray Trapani, and you can find me obviously here on YouTube if you want to subscribe. It's Tiffany Fong. I'm on Twitter at Tiffany Fong with one underscore. I'm on Twitch currently at Tiffany Fong TV, at Kick at Tiffany Fong, on Substack at TiffanyFong.substack.com. I'll just leave all my handles right here. I would obviously appreciate it if you like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. But anyway, I love you all so very much and I will talk to you very, very soon with more of Ray Trapani.